uh, our leader is back. Yes, Skylinks, and this time, no force in the universe will stop me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about, yeah? Hmm. I come to the new set. Yes. Try not to cough and hack with a lots of a cold all over the camera. Yes. I have read Apostles of Mercy. Lindsay Ellis's uh, third book in the best selling. Uh, well, the first one was a bestseller. Thing. It says it's an instant bestseller, uh, which means she probably did pay for it. But that's fine. The other two, they're great, but they're, but they're not instant. Um, I don't think Netflix is making a show out of it or anything. But that'd be cool. Um, we're not going to do that. So don't worry. <laughs> we're not going to do that. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, this is the third one. Trilogy. Namuna, uh, Namuna Trilogy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, the adventures of another Korra. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's a Korra in the book. That's not Korra. The Adventures of Another Korra. Um, it's not the same one as in the show. So you have, um, yeah, and her robot lover, um, Amber Thand. And that's apparently a second character. That's a Paris and another one. And that's another robot. That also has a, a lover. In, in the second, in the third one. And, um, yeah, so... Yeah, so we have another another chase adventure thing. They try to get to escape the authorities and go to Japan. Some of them get there, some of them don't. There's another group that goes out to flying over the Rockies and crashes. There's an alien attack there too. And, uh, there's these other aliens called uh, the the mega structure or something like that. Super mind or something, something like that. Yeah, and they're uh, supposed to be coming to the, the destroy the Earth because it's, they're not worthy or something. <laughs> all, all of the Decepticons are that. looking for resources, so we've got the, the Decepticons in their thing, and um, yeah, yeah, they're not really Decepticons. It's it's this other race that she created for the story to make it sound. You know, less like a Transformers fanfic. Um, yeah, so this time around, uh, there's more of that. There's a little deception. There's a third act breakup. You know, that kind of thing. It, uh, um, if you made a movie out of it, you'd kind of have to section off. And, uh, miniseries would make more sense to what you want. Um, but yeah, um, so there's a different president in it. It's a little later in time in this alternate universe. It's 2008 to 2009. In this other universe, um, there's there's a early version of of the uh, unknown pandemic. Um, aliens attempt at one point to cause a pandemic, a space plague on the Earth, and they want to send it to China. So it's, I wonder what she's I wonder what she was thinking of when she wrote this three years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so so. Uh, she's inadvertently uh, mentioning the origins of the space plague from all Transformers mush in, in these books. They can read the books in the space plague. That's where it started. 2008. If the, if the multiverse, you know. Psst. Yeah. That is a canon, but uh, yes, yes. Psst. Since Transformers is kind of a multiverse, so it's canon. With that other universe where they found that weird Wizard of Oz Decepticon place in the space station. In lexicons. Yeah, it's like that one. That's where they came from. When you're a dragon character, you're basically, uh, you're, it's basically Predaking. It's a dragon Predaking thing. Uh, the other one's less a Predacon and more of a a butterfly is the cover. It's the butterfly. Um, uh, there's juvenile ones running around that are, you know, they've, they've, they reproduce both asexually and hermaphroditically. Uh, 
They can reproduce sexually, they just choose not to. Budding and all that seems a lot like I'll turn summer's mush. And that's perfectly fine because when we thought of what we did our all transformers mush years ago. We borrowed from scripts from All Transformers Mush, the, the fan film series, and uh, and uh, stories, and then adapted them. So she did too. So that's fine. Same source or similar source. That we we get, we don't take credit for the corrosion of war without in mentioning the budding and reproducing sexually and all that. That was Rob Powers. So she's she's read Rob Powers too. So cool. <clears throat> Um, as for the space plague stuff, that comes a little later in lexicons. Um, we added that in this version. Uh, that wasn't in the, in the script currently. We added that because during doing our stuff, there was a, a plague going on. So we put that in there, in the background. She did here too. Yeah. Everybody was inspired by the, the, the pandemic to go and do that. Yes, um, so, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't actually enter into the plot much. The bad guy wants to unleash the, the, the thing, and it's kind of like a James Bond plot near the end where they, they just decide, okay, well, we can stop the bad guy and prevent that from happening. Technically doesn't happen to them, but, but it was going to, like, the villain had planned to release it and infect Korra, and, um, yeah, so, uh, there's the other bag has a super super organism is the name of the, the metal thing the creature yeah so you have uh, hmm. yeah it's uh yeah I, I just read it I literally just read it today uh, earlier today I read very fast earlier today uh, um, hours ago I uh, discovered that online on YouTube that uh, Lindsay Ellis is back. And uh, she did a uh, Yoko Ono in Beatles retrospective. Hmm. Excellent. My sisters would like that. I liked it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, yeah, I got it. Yeah. But that's a different story entirely. And I don't need to go into, into that either way. Um, other than they kind of didn't mention who actually killed John Lennon. They didn't mention that in there. They mentioned other people that killed people, but not, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, but no, Yoko Ono did not ruin the Beatles. That they, they, they were already on the outs with the manager and all that stuff before then. And, you know, so she didn't do it. <laughs> um, no. Although when they were on the drugs, they sounded pretty bizarre. I don't know those Beatles. But anyways, back to the that story. We have we have. Um, yeah, lots of reviews for it here, things like that. Um, raises for the other ones. There's oddly enough praises for this book on the back of the book. But you can get that hardcover. I think they are released online first, and people actually watch, listen to the audiobook. So what's going on? That would explain how to get on the sort of list officially. You know, just, just by word of mouth. So, yeah. It's a large fan following since being the nostalgic chick. She, she, she knows all a lot of those other people. Um, and uh, now it is ten years since he's been on the as that character. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so I don't know her at all, but I don't, I don't think I see her convention on the things. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. No, but but. Hmm. Now, I have three of her books, so next day, if she does show up in one of them, we'll I'll just get her to sign a new one. Carry a book around. Just sign that one. But yeah, um. Let's get one there. Uh, let's see, so we have, um. If there's a convention, I'm not saying there is one. Just if. It'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, um. As a sci fi. Story is a Transformers fanfic story, uh, certainly more elaborate than the other two. So they're trying to wrap things up, rush, rush, rush to certain scenes, go out in certain scenes. Um, <coughs> yeah. Mm. 
That's very similar to Exile. Um, you know, the, the trilogy of the, the early War for Cybertron stuff. Um, actually, the, the humor is very similar to Transformers 1 in some places. I think the Transformers 1 guys were inspired by these, these stories. Which is ironic, because it was a Transformers fanfic. That was the, the, the girl in love with Starscream, or something like to that effect. So when Starscream's turncoat near the end of her, and then turns back, it's like, well, yeah, Starscream would do that, because he's Starscream. He wouldn't really want like a human, you'd just be messing around. Sort of like a better version of the girl who loves Power Light. The girl who loves Power Light was one of the worst Transformers episodes ever, so she rewrote it as, no, she should be like a like Starscream. Which would make her a fan of uh, uh, Raksha as well. Who likes Decepticons. Raksha. You know. Snake Lady from uh, the conventions. Who we did see. Who we did see. No, the Snake Lady. As I mentioned the, the Snake Lady story. And we're like, like, oh yeah, she's going to be out here at the convention. And, and Mark's cards, of course, is all, ooh, a lady with snakes? Why didn't you say so? Let's go over there. <laughs> I just wanted to see the lady with the snake. <laughs> yeah. So yes, um, but this one, I don't know. Uh, this one likes dragon robots and jet robots. <laughs> uh, so, so you're, you're, yeah, you're, you have, a uh, yeah, uh, governments uh, warring over each other over whether there's going to be some invasion of aliens. As a War of the Worlds is quoted several times. Oh. That kind of stuff. Um, happy accidents happen. Unhappy ones happen. Some main characters die. I don't want to give it all away. Not our main character, but some of them die. The alien doesn't bring it back this time. <laughs> but yeah, so so you have you have the whole gamut of, of, of stuff. You, you wonder if, like, if, if Lindsay Ellis had done a pseudonym as a character in, in Lexicons, the newer show, what, what would she have been? Uh, uh, she probably would have been Penumbra, actually, I'm thinking, because Penumbra was more like, yeah. So that, that, that character that wrote an episode of that is probably... I think nothing is Chromia th one through three one through, it. but <clears throat> it's Chromia. But no, it's Penumbra. Yeah, she's just, so she's the the other like Decepticon. I, I bet that is her. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, over there at the Lexicon, maybe maybe not. Maybe it's just a fan. It's probably just me. Um, but yeah, people like uh, yeah, the primary character seems to be like her in some ways um, <laughs> so as another character that could be but it's probably not um, but definitely has that sort of quirk sort of ah, I'm just smarter than I appear oh, no. <laughs> she is no 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 she's totally good. Um, but but yeah the the, the very educated in film and film designers. So she, she studied it in school, so it was a lot about films and does film reviews and stuff. So, so yeah, um, yeah. I, I think the idea is that that she's, yeah, she's, um, yeah. Anyway, so I don't want I don't want to sound any, any you know, sexist or something. Yeah, <laughs> at all. So I'm not going to. Uh, but but she, yeah, she's she's uh, very learned, and uh, yes, and uh, capable of producing sci-fi stories. Um, so that they're they're not necessarily on the level of Alistair Reynolds and all the, the classics uh, like that or, or from earlier. Or other, uh, but she's on a par with I would say Sawyer and Foster easily. Um, I don't need Foster. I'm sorry. Um, uh, or Fergerberger, you know, one of those. Um, yeah. Saberhagen, maybe. Martin. <laughs> I don't know if she's quite George R. R. Martin. I mean, that guy was like the, the other Martin. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke a little bit. 
but more like the Gentry Lee side, but 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 yeah, a little more reserved. Um, hmm. Yeah. But back in the day in the Star Trek books, she's on a par with Diane Duane and DC Fontana and Diane Carey. Who also did a bunch of other books. Yeah, so. so that's good to be on a par with them, because that works. <laughs> DC Fontana, yeah. Um, a bunch of those this guy. Uh, I've some of them there, but yeah. Um, she could do a Star Trek. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Psst. yeah. So, so that the book is yeah, it's about these aliens that transformer like aliens, beast machine like aliens, that kind of that. Um, apparently, some of them are from an M type star, that's red, and some of them are from a K type star. So they're in like a binary, and they're like yeah. So that's what's going on. Uh, I thought maybe it was an error in the book, but it wasn't. It was just a line that was read weird. It was actually, no, the sun is not the M-type star. They were talking about the alien and his sun. Because the sun is the G-type star. Yeah. There probably wouldn't be that much difference between how they would see and stuff visually. All that much between a K-type and a G-type star. But an M-type star, they would, they would see differently. Um, but yeah. It depends on the level of luminosity the K-type star is. And, uh, and of course, an F-type star would be quite a bit brighter. And then, uh, yeah, and, uh, and probably wouldn't have... Yeah, you know, maybe they'd have more eye coverings if it was an F-type star. Like, like yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, then they, then they go up and to the higher bands, and then A-type is, like, Blindingly white, and there wouldn't be anything alive on eyes. Um, not really. Um, but yeah, um, an O would be, there wouldn't be anything on an O type star or a B type star. But yeah. In orbit, there wouldn't be, yeah, I wouldn't think so. Because you'd go that high up on the spectrum that they're not old enough. Yeah, I don't know how their, their FTL works in the story, but they seem to imply that it does. Um, that it just does, and they, and they got there somehow. Uh, I like that it just doesn't really concern itself with the science of that. But, but sometimes the science of chemicals and chemical reactions and stuff, that is in there. Uh, book two, they, he had some consultants on book two to help her with the, some friends that do stuff. Uh, there, there were a few um, modern oddities in it because she's writing in a different universe, a different 2008. But um, yeah, or she mentions Google and and other and uh, what's the other things, texting and uh, what was the other thing? She brought up the yeah, the internet of 2008 and stuff. There was there's something else, but it doesn't matter. It's, there were fewer anachronisms, but you're getting well, it's a different parallel universe. So. Sure, it might work there. Um, yeah, the alien rescues him out of the plane crash. One point. Um, yeah. So, and then they get there real quick to go to the plane crash. That was a little odd. But in either the, either that, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. If they're if they're if their satellite technology was only two thousand eight levels, it would have taken them months to get. No GPS. Don't. Um, yeah. Or very primitive Magellan GPS. Yeah. Gotta have satellites in order to have GPS. It works. Yeah. So you have. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine though. Certainly the high, high praises of the. Uh, the almost one of Hugo. Maybe look for that. The second one. Hugo Award, yeah. Or as a finalist, I guess probably didn't win for whatever reason. I guess she also got kicked off Twitter recently. Which is probably why she's back on YouTube this morning. So. But Twitter X, heck with Twitter X. Just, yeah. uh, well, now that Twitter's owned by that other guy, just 
don't bother with it anymore. It's not worth it. It really, really isn't worth it. Um, yeah, so. <clears throat> yeah. Of course, I haven't been on here in years. It's not worth it. Yeah, so, so. I have a lot of, uh, It's, it's very good. Uh, I read right through it real quick. A couple hours. It's a fast read. Yeah. yeah. I recommend it. Yeah. So. Lindsay Ellis is, uh, is now an author. And since that last update there on of my review there, I have 38 books on Amazon. <laughs> anyway. Um... Only two or three of the earlier ones of which have sold at all. <clears throat> they seem to like the Cillian stories. And then and, and, and Canary Space, like somebody bought one of each of those twice. <laughs> and uh and Starcrackers that or Space Grand Guards. <coughs> 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 you know what, sorry. Yeah. I know we're not going to publish any of the old Transformers mush stuff because it's not ours. We adapted it for the screen. Okay. Can't do that. Anyway, um, that's my review. Of the, uh, don't, don't buy it. <laughs>